Hello and welcome, my name is John Gigo, and today's some type of video is all about post-production film emulation and image filtering with the plugin Dehancer. Now I am a big fan of film stock colors, yes, from real film, and filters for lenses. So when Dehancer reached out to me recently and asked me if I'd like to give their plugin a try on the editing side of things, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. To be very clear up front though, they gave me the license for the full plugin so that I could test out all the tools and talk about them, and asked me to discuss it honestly with no restrictions on what I could say. This is not a sponsored video. I am doing the same process as any of my product over videos, talking about what I like, what I don't like, what can be better, and where I see uses for this tool for various types of users. I hope to have more opportunities like this in the future, but having integrity is always a priority for me, and I will always say if a company has sent me a product or paid me for a demonstration. If you're here for just my quick main thoughts about Dehancer, here they are, but please do consider staying around and listening to my reasoning and to see examples of usage for a better understanding. Simply put, Dehancer is very good at specifically degrading the footage, as the name would suggest and you probably would hope for, but it does go further than that. I think the best thing I can say in summary about Dehancer is that it is very easy to use to get good results for film stock colors, grain, footage degradation, and specific color control without sacrificing customizability and detail or having it look like some sort of cheap overlay. It really is an easy to use plugin. For the film emulation aspects like grain and color, I think it offers a lot of great options that are customizable, and then being able to add bloom and halation helps sell the effect and or craft more of a stylized image. Overall, Dehancer is a good tool if your goals align primarily with wanting to either emulate film colors or to degrade your footage in either a subtle or not subtle way. The price can be a lot depending on your budget and use case, but it is comparable to other similar plugin tools, and the flexible licensing links can help save money if you just need the tools temporarily. If you are in a really micro budget tier, it is probably a little pricey. If you are in a truly no budget at all kind of tier or just starting out, I don't think this tool is going to be the highest priority on your list no matter what. It would likely be much financially better to invest in something like lighting if we're gonna be talking about the most potential impact for your project's quality. But if you have a budget and you have access needs for these kinds of tools for your use case, this software is easy to use and delivers good results. As film emulation tools go, the ones in Dehancer are my favorite ones I've used in a really long time, specifically because they look good and are flexible. In Dehancer, the specific tools like halation, film damage, grain, and vignette all have comparable tools built into Resolve, but the ones in Dehancer in general and in my usage so far offer better flexibility, ease of use through their menus, and I prefer the effect qualities of some of them compared to what Resolve offers. The film grain in particular, I like the look much more than Resolve's built-in grain, but the vignette tool is very similar. I go over all of these details later in this video. My personal opinion is that I like Dehancer, but I'm also never going to be somebody to say, go out and buy this, it's the only best thing possible. I actually made a video about that idea a while ago, and I've linked it down below if you are curious. I prefer to talk about the advantages and disadvantages so that people can get a sense if something is going to work for their use case in particular. I think this makes more sense logically and budget-wise. Dehancer will not simply replace shooting on film, nor will it replace lens filters. It will also not replace having a basic understanding of color correction and grading. In fact, I'd argue that if you're trying to use this or any other program to skirt learning the basics, it will ultimately be detrimental to your creative ability. Conversely, if you have an understanding of color grading, I think these tools will offer you a unique opportunity for crafting your image. What this is, is simply another tool in crafting your image. And that is what excites me so much because I love having a diversity of tools to make my art with and Dehancer is coming through as a powerful one. In my opinion, one of the best ways to learn if a tool is right for your uses is to use it for yourself. So before I start talking about my opinions on the product, I want to say that Dehancer has a free trial available from their website, and I encourage you to go give it a spin for yourself. I have links to their website down below. This will be a longer video because I try to mention a lot of details about what I do like, what I don't like, and how things can be used. To get started, let's go over the basics. There are a lot of options to choose from in terms of the software versions, and I like that a lot. They have plugins for Resolve, Final Cut, Premiere, After Effects, Capture One, Affinity, Lightroom, and Photoshop. 
As someone who is almost entirely outside of the Adobe workflow at this point, it's great to see support for programs like Capture One and Affinity included as well. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Dehancer Pro package for Resolve in particular, but the tools are almost identical in both Final Cut and Premiere Pro. And if you need a specific tool like Halation, you can get some of the tools as their own plugins, which is a really nice option to offer them a la carte. But let's start further back. Filtering light is a great way to help us capture our story in a specific way, in particular using lens filters that alter the entire image being captured, from color filters to diffusion filters like Black Pro Mist. I am a huge fan of lens diffusion filters, and that is something that immediately stuck out to me when looking at this product. Using tools like Bloom Inhalation, you can create effects in post that are usually achieved through lens filters or film stock choices. And other tools like Film Grain and Film Damage are also great to help build an image that suits your story. I'm not sure if this ever has really come up in videos of mine before, but I'm not really a purist. I love digital, I love film, I love physical filters, and I love editing images in post-production. But that's not a fix it in post stance either because that is usually able to be avoided by better producing. I do believe in capturing the best you can in camera for your goals, but using a whole array of tools, physical and digital, gives you the most options when crafting images and stories with your artistic fingerprints on them. Shooting really clean film? Awesome. Grain overlays? Cool. Faking film in other ways? Sweet. Making images that make your audience feel something relative to your story? Ideal. So for me, Dehancer gives me an opportunity to affect my image in post-production in various ways from simulating film to simulating filters, and much more that allows for much more fine-tuning of your image's feeling. This all being said, I am not a real colorist. I do relatively simple color work for my own jobs really frequently, but I am still very much learning post-color overall and my DP knowledge far exceeds my colorist knowledge. So as I'm talking here, it's much more about manipulating the image in post and not an exact colorist perspective. Let's talk about usage first. After installing the plugin, you have to install camera profiles, but that is managed conveniently from within the app in Resolve. Just click download profiles and it will start that process. No individual camera profile file installation, which is really nice. When you first get into the tool, it will have input settings. If your camera is listed, it is as easy as selecting it from the menu. If your camera isn't listed, you can do a color space transform node to make your footage Rec. 709 or many other color spaces, and then use Rec. 709 or the other color space in Dehancer's settings. Super easy to do. From there, you can use tools to start quote unquote, developing your digital image. Before I go any further, I want to mention stability in that I did have Resolve crash once while working with Dehancer. Resolve, like any software, does crash from time to time, but I find it very stable on my system and crashes are rare. I'm not personally overly concerned about Dehancer-based crashes, and since I didn't see a flurry of them or even a second one, this one could have just been happenstance. So at this point, I think the plugin itself has no major stability concerns. As I start to show examples, my goal with the test was to show the effect of the plugin on both light sources that are in the frame with a variety of practicals, but also how the effects change the light falling on subjects and how different types of lights look from octoboxes to Fresnels and even standard Bowens hoods. I will have a full examples video coming soon, just like normal. I should also mention that Dehancer is a color correction tool suite rather than a LUT that is just a static table of values. This is a really important distinction that adds to its value and flexibility. One thing that I noticed right off the bat was that Dehancer lets you be very subtle or obtuse with its tools. Not everything needs to look like 8mm high ISO film that was shot with a bunch of lens diffusion and then it survived a dust storm and then it had bad development and then it got run over and now it has color degradation because it's 30 years old. But if you want that look, you can build it really easily in Dehancer. And on the other hand, you can also build a subtle twist to the color, bringing classic film stock looks to your image and enough grain to break up digital noise without being distracting. For the most part, I think Dehancer has a strength in being able to be subtle with its many tools, where most people will get a lot of usage is subtly adjusting the feeling of a shot or its texture, rather than adding specifically super heavy effects onto everything. And whether it's Dehancer or another film emulation plugin, or just a simple grain or damage overlay, I think having restraint in your usage will yield better results ultimately. But if you do need aggressive levels, they are here and they can be fine tuned to your liking in Dehancer. Resolve itself does come with halation, grain, and film damage tools already, so I'm going to discuss the differences. You can also use the Resolve halation tool to get a bloom-like effect, but that isn't as controllable in my opinion as the specific bloom tool in Dehancer. 
I haven't used Final Cut or Premiere Pro in a while, so I'm not able to fully say if they have similar built-in tools like Resolve. I'm not gonna talk about every single detail of every single tool in this video, but I am going to hit the main ones and have some comparisons for you so you can judge for yourself. The first tool I'm going to mention is the Dehancer Monitor, which is a plugin that you can get for free from their website, linked down below. This is a highlight guard tool as well as a false color tool, which is nice because when making adjustments, you can just scroll down in the menu and click the checkbox on and off to judge how your changes have affected the image. It is free and a nice tool to have. Now with all the image adjustment tools on here with preset options, you can select a preset like 35 millimeters. It will set the setting and then you can switch it to the custom option and then adjust from that starting point. A nifty little trick that speeds things up. Film color. Between this and the film grain, I think is why most people would seek out this product for their projects. And I think it delivers. There are a ridiculous number of film stock colors available in Dehancer. Some of them are still photo film stocks even, which allows for expanded creative options. There's almost too many, but I like the lack of limitations, even if the list can be a little bit overwhelming to look at. Now, I am not exactly sure how perfectly accurately these are recreating the color renditions of film in real life, but the demonstrations on their website make it seem like they are very reasonably accurate, However, I couldn't test that myself because my budget does not allow me to rent a 16mm camera, shoot, develop, and scan the film. I think I need a few more Patreon subs before that can happen. Nudge, nudge. All jokes aside, it seems like a lot of care has been put into making these faithful recreations of classic film colors. But that sort of is why this product exists, right? If you aren't able to shoot on film but like a color look of a certain stock, this is a great tool to add that color to your grade. There are even some ultra rare stocks listed that would be all but impossible to shoot with now, and that's pretty fun. That being said, if you know the film process, shooting on film stock for a film look will almost always look better than a tool that's making digital footage look like film. But these are the choices that we make when planning our projects and the specific needs and opportunities of each one. Overall, the direct color adjustment tools seen in the suite are powerful and easy to get started with without losing control. The Dehancer menus do provide a certain level of narrowed focus with a simple interface. That might help people who are learning and overwhelmed by the sheer amount of options Resolve has built in. And that focus also doesn't take away from being able to use Dehancer's tools combined with Resolve's powerful tools, not instead of. As for the film grain tool, the slider options are pretty similar to what you can find in Resolve's film grain tool that's built into the program. However, I think it looks a lot better ultimately. I use subtle amounts of film grain frequently and I find that some of the resolve tool options I don't end up liking the resulting look all that much. Dehancers to me look a lot more natural and I like to be able to change things like the grain resolution for a little more softness or if you change it to a lot more softness, you can get a low quality telecine scan effect. Dehancers grain also has the benefit of not being just an overlay and instead procedural and related to the image itself. In terms of what is offered in the simulated grain densities, the presets each have a similar range from 8mm to 35, but Dehancer actually goes up to 65mm as well, which is nice if you film with large sensor digital cameras. Dehancer also allows for customization between shadows, midtones, and highlights for the grain levels, and a wide variety of simulated ISO densities if you don't want to fully customize. I think that both Dehancer and Resolve's built-in grain tools could be used subtly or obtusely if you want to have grain, but Dehancer does a better job in the end at having the grain look like part of the image based on the filmed colors. The film color head is an interesting tool that might be more easily overlooked against the other tool's popular usage, but within it hides the power of subtractive saturation in an easy to use format. This is a concept that I've been wanting to experiment with for a while that on its most basic level is that on film with lower exposure, saturation density increases. This is not exactly the same thing for digital and one way that you can make digital film emulation look better is with this process. There are other plugins that do this for a wide variety of costs, but I like that this is built into the Dehancer suite with an easy to use functionality. Resolve's built-in printer lights can do a similar minute color, tint, and warmth correction, but they don't currently have control over subtractive saturation color density, so Dehancer adding that function with a very easy to use interface for a printer lights type workflow is awesome. As with most of these tools, there's an in-depth technical explanation on Dehancer's website, and I encourage you to go read those to learn more about the concepts directly because they can't be all fit into this single video. 
Being able to balance colors with this tool and tint your shots while having it affect the saturation density of the colors directly is incredibly cool, and it's easy to do using this tool once you learn the basics of the concept. And this is related to a broader topic of how no matter your editing platform, just cranking that saturation slider up doesn't give your image as much nuance as tools like this one. Subtractive saturation is actually a pretty huge topic, and I suggest that if you're looking into trying to be better at color grading, you look more into this topic in particular. I personally am not an expert on it, but I'm learning more, and I'm also using it a lot to plan colors from the cinematography side of things. Halation is an aspect of the structure of the film strip, having light internally reflect and spread to other areas of the emulsion. This then creates an edge glow and is sort of an in-between of almost like a fringe and a diffusion around bright points. This effect seems like it could be easily overdone and end up looking like really severe lens fringing, but if you add it subtly, it can create a wonderful glow to your highlights that does look like film that has been affected by halation. Honestly, Bloom is one of the tools that I was most excited to test out because I love diffused lighting looks, and the Bloom of filters is something I really like in particular. But if you don't have filters, being able to use digital tools is something that's really cool. Softening highlights and making them glow adds a certain pop to many shots, but as I say, less is often more. As with most of these tools, you can choose various film sizes as presets, and there's a mask mode to see what's being affected in the image, and I think that is so, so, so useful for both the halation and bloom tools. I'm very glad that they added that. I can see myself using this tool really frequently because I like blooming light effects, and that is one thing in particular that I find makes something look a lot more like film. And the bloom also looks great when combined with the halation for an overall effect that helps sell the film emulation way more than just grain alone. Gateweave is something I've been curious about for a backburner project that I'm working on, and being able to create a gateweave for a film simulation takes the image beyond just being colored to look like the film, but to simulate how the film actually moves in a three-dimensional space as it's pulled through the mechanism. A fun trick is that if you have a shot that is just too static, you can add a really subtle, almost imperceivable movement to it using gateweave, and it isn't as overt as adding a standard handheld camera shake. This tool certainly is more on the dehancing side of things, as technically this is seen more frequently as a flaw in film capture. The film breath tool adds the ability to have pops of color and exposure like you would get from film, especially depending on the type and quality of the stock you're using, as different parts of the emulsion will lack consistency in color and exposure capture. Once again, this is more on the degradation side. Yes, there are film damage tools in Resolve already, however, those feel rudimentary compared to dehancer's options. But hey, they're free, built in, and still customizable. But really, it's kind of limited to dust and then scratches and resolve, and then they're more of like vertical lines and less random, and to me, they end up feeling cheap and inauthentic. With the Hanser, though, the film damage tool allows for dust, hairs, and scratches, and you can easily adjust how they look, their size, how frequently they appear, etc. And I find that it doesn't just look like a Windows Movie Maker overlay like so many film damage assets and sometimes the Resolve tool itself end up looking like. Instead, it feels very natural, like it's actually scratched film, and this is a great way to add a vintage look to your footage. The Vignette tool is very similar to Resolve's built-in one. I think that each can get very similar effects with ease. It might be a tad easier to work with it and adjust it in Dehancer, just if you're already working with their tools, but I don't think either has a specific advantage or disadvantage. Dehancers did have a slight bug on my system with the effect preview, but not with the output quality. So really I'm sharing this because I told the developer about it and they've been very responsive about wanting to know the exact circumstances I had that caused it so they can address it. A response that makes me very happy with any developer and I'm glad to know that they're responsive to customer feedback. Hello, it is your pal Future Trenton. I have paused past Trenton because I want to give an update that in the meantime between when I filmed this and now, I've actually had some conversations with Dehancer's customer support and developer teams, and they actually were able to patch that in the latest release as a bug fix. And I think that it is awesome that they were able to do that not only quickly, but also effectively just to make sure that the quality of the program is being maintained. So I just wanted to give that quick update because I think that it reflects well on Dehancer that they actually maintain their product and they work with users and everybody through that whole process has been very vocal about wanting to have feedback so that they can improve the product overall.
And lastly for the tools, I think that being able to control the total impact with one slider is a nice touch for when you have everything looking good and you want to dial it back just a tiny, tiny bit. What I like specifically, namely, is that you get a lot of control with an easy to use interface. If you're looking to get film grain on your digital footage for any reason, Dehancer makes it easy with lots of options available. It is similar to other plugins for this, but I like the options it provides for the grain presets and custom controls. The film stock colors are where I see Dehancer shining brightly. Between the sheer number of film stocks available and the grain options, it is infinitely easier to manage and customize than using a film grain overlay. I think that the grain options alone vastly expand on the possibilities that Resolve comes with, especially in terms of how the grain actually looks. I really like the halation and bloom tools. I think they're very fun to work with, and they certainly give lots of diffused light details that can be either subtle or overt. The film head and developer tools let you further customize your color and access the lovely subtractive saturation options. And the ability to have an easy to manage shadow and highlight tinting system is really nice. On the consumer access side of things, I really like the ability to get a specific tool to use separately from the rest of the full plugin suite if you want to save money. If you only need a tool for a short amount of time, like if you only need Bloom for a particular project right now, the flexible licensing lengths are useful and more budget friendly also. Plus, the ability to get a lifetime license is a nice change of pace from everything always being a never-ending subscription all of a sudden. What I don't like, and this isn't a knock on Dehancer in particular, but I do feel like so many tools, especially ones for post-production coloring, are thought of by so many people as the thing that will make their film look good or real. I know I've done this to myself before, so I want to be really clear here that if you want specific tools or flexibility like a product like this can provide, such as high quality, easy to use color and grain options, then this can be a great option for you. But if you don't need them for how you're crafting your images, then this won't be a quick fix, easy to make things simply better with a magic button. I wish I could say so, but I don't think a product like that exists. So that's where I come from with most tools, and this one is no different. There are lots of great options here that can make for great film emulation and color work, but it's not one click. And both learning the tool and working with it with intention will yield better results for your images. So this is less of something that I don't like and more of a warning about how you'll be able to use it. Other than that, some of the tools are similar to what Resolve offers. Like I said, I'm not up to date on Premiere or Final Cut's options, but previously their options felt more limited and this tool would probably have helped expand the options greatly. When I used Premiere as my main NLE, I did have a Film Convert plugin that I would use. As for Dehancer versus Resolve tools, I will probably make another video about this in particular, but for the tools that are similar like Vignette, either one works great, but in other places like the grain or the damage, I think Dehancer's results look a lot better and offer generally more fine-tuning ability, which I prefer. When using the Hellation and Bloom tools, I do think they can make halos around the bright points really easily, so as I've said, moderation is important. But once again, that's more about usage and not a specific complaint about the program itself. The one minor inconvenience for usage that I don't like is how adding the plugin to the node will make some, but not all, options in the menu set to active. I find myself having to go through and turn them off one by one so I can start from a clean slate for my coloring. Not having so many options on at the start is a kind of a quality of life issue, and I think that if there was a tick box that controlled them all and you could just turn them all off at the start, that would be a great option. What I'd like to see in the future is more diffusion and softening tools added beyond the halation and bloom, so you could have more control of direct diffusion adjustment and simulation for images. I like the nuance of these tools a lot, so having the ability to really fine-tune digital diffusion would be a great addition and be thematically appropriate for the goals of dehancing and film emulating. I'm not sure how it could be implemented, but I do wish that there was a way to compare two of the stocks to each other in the drop-down menu so that when you're making a film stock color selection, you could easily judge the differences between the two without having to apply it and then switch it and then maybe even take stills to really compare the images. This is one thing that I also don't like about Resolve's built-in film stock lets also because it's that same process of having to switch back and forth. 
I do think that if they could identify which stocks were motion picture film versus still film just really easily in the drop-down menu, that'd be a helpful organization tool as well, although that information can be found for easy reference on their website. And lastly, I would like to see them offer a video and photo package with both the video plugin and the photo plugin together. I think that would be a very useful thing for many people, myself included, who work frequently enough in both mediums. I want to highlight that everywhere you look in this program, you can tell the developers have aimed to simulate analog processes in a digital environment, which I think is fantastic. I don't know if I can judge whether or not it works 100% exactly as such one-to-one, -one, but I think relating some of the concepts to physical processes does add context and understanding to tools more than perfect digital values viewed on a computer screen. But it also seems like they have a healthy philosophy of hybridization between analog and digital concepts. And I have a lot of respect for trying to translate darkroom processes to an NLE environment with lots of care and intention. And I think that's something quite admirable to me as someone who loves digital and film and where the two meet. Will I use Dehancer on every single project? Probably not, because it doesn't fit the creative needs of every single project. Will I use some of the tools from the suite on projects consistently? Yes, because I like to be able to simulate film colors or add bloom or add some film grain to projects when it's needed, and having a tool that does that well with relative ease and lots of customization makes that process very streamlined. Plus, when creating new projects and thinking of tools I could use in either production or post-production to build an image that I want, this suite of tools adds to those options from the development and pre-production end. And simply using it as a quote-unquote emergency tool to tweak an image if you are now looking at it on your computer screen and just wishing it had a little bit more texture or grain or a little bit different of a color, it puts those tools into your hands with relative ease of use, and that's a huge value to me. If you're interested in buying any of Dehancer's plugins, you can save 10% on your order when you apply the coupon code THCIMATOGRAPHY at checkout. That's written out down below in the video description along with links to their website, and that affiliate code helps support the free videos I make for this channel. This is not going to be my only video on Dehancer because I think this product is worth going into more detail. As usual, I will have full example videos that go hand in hand with this product overview video, and I'm also planning to create a direct comparison to some of the tools built into Resolve and a comparison between Dehancer and Lens filters. I think those are more detailed videos that will help give people a better understanding about what this tool can be used for, what it can't be used for, and ultimately if it's right for their project's needs. But for now, I'm really enjoying how this tool set works and the results that I have been getting. Let me know if you have any questions about Dehancer and its tools. You can leave those down in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them for you. If you are someone who likes micro-budget filmmaking and editing videos like this one, please give the video a like to help me connect with more viewers. And you can consider subscribing for upcoming videos about tools and techniques for cinematography, lighting, and micro-budget filmmaking in general. As always, my social media links to other places that I hang out online are down in the video description. And please, whatever you do today, do something kind for somebody. Peace.